Hey everyone, it's Crazy Canuck coming at you again from Saskatchewan, Canada on another nice cold day, minus 25 Celsius. And as you can see, the forecast for the next two weeks doesn't look great. So, I wanted to start off this, uh, start off this video with a rant. You all may have seen this uh, so-called scientist, Bill Nye. <clears throat> he has come out and said that uh, with climate change, everybody the United States is going to have to grow their food in Canada and the problem with that is there's no infrastructure in place to move the food south. This guy, I don't know how he gets any airplay. He's not a scientist. He's a moron who's obviously never been to Canada and seen anything with our agriculture. First of all, how are you going to move a billion, billion acres of agricultural land into Canada? We already have agriculture going on here so that's a stupid comment right off the get-go and then uh, not to have infrastructure to move it south we've been exporting to the US forever so I don't know why they even listen to this idiot he knows absolutely nothing about agriculture and he knows very little about science but anyway that's my rant <clears throat> and uh, now we'll get on with something a little more useful uh, a little more on the uh, solution side considering all the hazards of cold weather. Okay, about 10 years back or so we had a major problem here with freezing lines. Uh, this, this is going to be more for people in the rural area who have a well to draw from and a septic system. We actually had our incoming water line freeze. It's an inch and a quarter line and then uh, we also had our septic system freeze up and at that point I'm trying to figure out how are you going to thaw out an iced up line that's underground. You can't put heat to it cause, uh, and you can't let it uh, thaw out naturally because that would take six months. So this is what I came up with. In order to get heat to the source of the ice, I used an air hose. So this isn't the exact air hose I used. I had a 50 footer, but this is basically what I did. I took off the air chuck part of it. And I got a funnel. And this one slips over top like that. If you have a bigger hose, you can get a different kind of funnel with a smaller spout and it'll fit inside. The other end of the line I left because it's got a, a metal end on it. So this end goes down into the pipe until it hits the ice. Once it hits the ice, you take boiling hot water and you pour it in the funnel. That water goes down the hose to the ice. As it's melting the ice, you keep pushing the hose further into the pipe until it gets through the ice and uh, the line is ice free. This also, as you're doing this, will heat up the line and the surrounding ground around it and help you get the system back up and running before it freezes again. So you can use this on any system where you've got a line that's, you know, an inch and a half, inch and a quarter line that's underground that's inaccessible. Other lines that are above ground like your half inch water lines and that you can put heat trace on and uh, solve the problem that way. So that's a, another quick solution to uh, a, a freeze up problem which there's going to be I think a lot more of especially as the, the severe temperatures move south and the people further south haven't dealt with this kind of issue before. So that's, that's your solution and uh, that's the video for today. And uh, I'll just do a little close up and I'll be right back. Alright so on the, I wanted to answer one question on uh, from Wesley uh, about my research method. Um, a lot of what I do is from experience when I'm growing up but when it comes to research, I do multidiscipline uh, fact-checking. Uh, 
pretty much Google er something to death when I'm researching. Uh, for an example, um, when it comes to climate change, global warming, uh, grand solar minimum, when I started doing some research back probably five, six years ago before I even knew about grand solar minimum, uh, they were talking about melting Arctic and they were talking about all this stuff and uh, the so-called scientists were using the Northwest Passage as an indicator of global warming. I did a, a search on the Glo uh, Northwest Passage because I remember from school some of the expeditions that were up there. The first passage made through the Northwest Passage was 1906 1909 sometime in that era so for them to say that going through the Northwest Passage is um, uh, an indicator of global warming it's kind of false considering they'd gone through there in the early 1900s so obviously and and of course this winter or this last summer the the passage was closed due to ice so it was obviously warmer back then I don't care what they say the temperature is and uh, you just stick to actual facts. Um, they used to farm on Greenland. They can't farm anymore because it's too cold. It was obviously warmer in the past. Uh, they grew grapes in England in places they can't grow grapes now. So you look at the actual historical facts where the temperatures really don't matter. You know, you know that if there's no snow it's above zero. It's, there is no way to fake it and uh, that's how I do research. I, I look at historical documents, I look at temperature records, I look at um, all kinds of different things. Um, it's, a, it's a process, you, know, you kind of think through it and sometimes when you start researching and you'll find something you un didn't expect, uh, like I was researching trying to find a specific storm back in the 70s that I remember I had to go to the archives at the newspaper and came across an article um, saying how hot it was and how it was going to uh, really hamper the yields of the crops and that was from 1975. Uh, another article about the ozone layer, 1975. Another article about the ozone layer, 1985. Uh, you start lining those up to the solar cycles and every solar minimum there was a, a big deal uh, about the ozone layer. So you just go wherever the research takes you and when you find something verify with uh, multiple sources and then just think through it. Does it make sense? Um, so that's pretty much my way of doing research. Um, you'd be surprised what you find if you just let it let it guide you so that that uh, for the for Wesley and on how I do my research so in idiots like Bill Bill and I start saying that because of uh, global warming they're gonna move have to move agriculture to Canada in the middle of the coldest weather we have had in 200 years and not even considering how devastated we were up here in Canada last fall when we got snow in October or in September that lasted into October there are still some crops out in the field today so here's a guy claiming to be a scientist who doesn't even know how to do basic research and then like I said about uh, following the research um, when I was looking up the article for this video I saw something very interesting and this is how stupid some of these uh, things are. That'll show up. Um, yeah there it is. Bill Nye, a science guy. Oh, not the right one. There's the McLean's article. <clears throat> Bill Nye meets another science guy. Well, guess who he met with? Justin Trudeau. Another non-scientist. So, where's the media going with this? They're, they're putting out stuff now from non-scientists and trying to make their claims. Just pay your taxes. 
So anyway, that's my video for today. Um, not going to have uh, a video for you for probably uh, a little over a week. I'm, I'm going to be away from the computer for, for a week. But uh, when I get back, it's, uh, it's going to be a good one. So look forward to that. Uh, stay warm, stay safe. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Like if you like. And we'll talk to you soon.